Are house prices being manipulated to look higher than fair market value in many neighborhoods across the United States? A lot of viewers are reaching out to me asking me to discuss the so-called elephant in the room with regards to big tech companies out there buying property across the US. Now, the last couple of days, I watched a video on a different platform with a real estate agent out of Nevada. Sean Gotcher is the name, and he was talking about big tech companies buying property. And he has this theory, almost a conspiracy theory to some extent, on one of the so called big tech companies out there and what they're doing in different markets that it's actually manipulating the prices of homes. And in today's video, we're going to dive into that in more detail, help you understand exactly what he's talking about and how a lot of it actually makes sense and what it actually means if that is true. What will happen to home prices in the future if that is the case? That's what we're gonna dive into in today's video. Now over the last 12 months, we've seen home prices appreciate nearly 20% in a lot of markets out there. Some markets have seen even crazier appreciation, you know, 20, 25% in some cases, and even higher in some markets. And you know, viewers are reaching out, buyers are reaching out going, how do people continue to buy this? How are home prices continuing to sell higher and higher above the asking price? And how are these tech companies coming in, buying property for more than it's worth? How are they actually profiting from this business model? And I've actually had it come across my desk as well as agents I know desk as well. And what I mean by that is occasionally, I'll go to list a property for, for a for a client of mine, right? We'll, we'll go over the comps, we'll say, you know, these are where the last few comparables sold in this market, this is what I think it's worth. And they'll wanna get a second opinion. And they may go get a second opinion from another real estate agent. And typically, we're pretty close in what we think the value of a home is. But occasionally, these sellers will go out and they'll go to one of these iBuying companies out there. Now, what is an iBuyer? It's one of these tech platforms out there where you can type in your address and you essentially get an offer on your property. Now, there is a big company out there that's doing a lot of this. And this goes back to that video that I mentioned earlier. And this video is one that you use to search on that, you know, when you're going to look at homes, a lot of people are using this website to search property. And they're using artificial intelligence based on you know things that you're viewing and maybe even the search criteria that you have put into their their system to bring back similar properties that you might be interested in now because we know supply is an issue across the united states and demand is really high there's not really a lot of supply out there and, and so you know it's not like it's sending you all of these properties that meet your criteria but what it is doing is it's gathering information. It's gathering information on neighborhoods that you're interested in. There's a really good chance that you have the parameter set up to tell it what you can afford, you know, the bottom end and maybe even the high end of what you're able to afford, even though you might not be looking at that price point, the system knows based on the things that you're searching. And maybe even you don't even have those search criteria set up, but you're looking at properties in a certain price point and you continue to do that and maybe occasionally you're scheduling time through their system to see those properties so they know what you like to see, right? And now I've come across this company um, many, many times, and where I was going with this is that, you know, occasionally I'll tell a client what their home is worth. Now they'll go to this company and put in their address and that company will make them an offer. And more than a handful of cases, I've seen that that company is willing to pay them substantially more for their home than I actually think it's worth. Even factoring in the craziness in the housing market, even factoring in the low supply, how homes are appreciating month over month, this company is coming in and buying the property for more than, than I think it's worth, more than probably the seller thinks it's worth in many cases, and they're giving you know cash offers and, and giving the buyer the option to close when they want. So there's a lot of pluses for a seller in this case. But you wonder, right? I wonder, as a real estate agent, been doing this 20 years, how is this company coming in, buying these properties and, and, and selling them at the prices that they're purchasing them at and actually making any money? Because at the end of the day, I know that home in many cases isn't going to sell for the price they paid, or at least it shouldn't based on the comparables. But that's where this whole theory, this you know so-called conspiracy theory is what I'm calling it, actually makes a lot of sense. Now let's say this company overpaid for a property in a neighborhood, right? They overpaid, let's let's in this case say that the property is worth about 540,000, but they made an offer at 580,000 because this is a similar story as to one I've had in the past. These are real numbers based on another property that I sold where this company came in and made an offer on a on a similar listing about $40,000 higher, $45,000 higher than what I thought it was worth. 
And I was wondering, how are they going to do this? How are they, you know, in a market to sell this property? Because they don't rent them out. They, they turn around and they sell these properties. What's the point of, of paying that much for a property when I'm going to close one that's almost identical for $45,000 less within this short time period? The theory is that this company is buying up a lot of property, right? They might be buying 30 properties. Uh, Sean used in his, his example, and, and 30 properties in a neighborhood. And those 30 that they bought, they might be paying 540 for them, pretty close to what I thought it was worth in this case. But then occasionally they'll throw one out there, right? They might pay 585 for the next one. And why would they do that? Because now they've got a new comp in that in that neighborhood, right? They they own that property. They have a new comp that's closed. So now the other 30 properties that they purchased in that area. Now they can list those properties for $40,000, $45,000 higher in this case, maybe even higher than that if they went in and did some, some you know, carpet and paint and, and some touch-ups to that property. And they have a comp to, to base it on, right? That now they have something to justify the price that they're using because they have that 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 new comp that's sold. Now, you'll have appraisers come out and, you'll, and, and they'll say that, that one new property in a neighborhood doesn't really you know, set the precedent for values in that market. Okay, that's fair. But what if this company went out and bought two of those or three of those at a higher price to justify all the lower price properties that they purchased in that market to bring their values up? Because two or three comps in a neighborhood definitely changes the value of that market, right? Appraisers need three closed comps in a neighborhood plus some active listings in, you know, on the appraisal in order to justify that. And now that they have those, they're able to bring the value of all those other properties that they purchased up. Makes a lot of sense, right? So, you know, when, you, when you're talking about these big tech companies out there buying property, now who's to, to say this is true or not, right? I, I don't know, but I think it's interesting. It's a it, very interesting theory, especially from somebody out there that's seen this company buy property for more than I think it's worth, more than other agents think it's worth in many, many cases. Now, the question becomes, what actually happens if that is the case, right? If, you know, whether or not they admit it or if it ever comes out that that's the case, what actually happens to the housing market now that some of these markets across the U.S., the values have been inflated because, you know, they, they've purchased them at higher prices, setting a precedent in those neighborhoods. Honestly, probably not a lot at the moment. And the reason for that is because you still have that lack of supply. You still have a lot of buyer demand out there. And, and it's not just one sell in those neighborhoods. Once they set that new precedent, so to speak, in a neighborhood, if that's actually what happens, you know, other home buyers are coming into those markets and buying property as well. So you might have a couple of people that purchased at an inflated price at one period, but once you have other sales and you know other traditional buyers, first time home buyers, move up buyers, second buyers, whatever it is, starting to buy at those higher levels, I'm not really sure it really does much to the to, to, to the market at that point because now you've you've got a new basis. They're just manipulating the market and making that progression happen faster than it normally would. Now, I don't agree if, if that's what they're doing, that that's right. It's not right by any means. And, and I'm, I'm not sure how the repercussions are, or what you could actually do to prove it in one way or the other. But the reality is, is that, you know, until something changes with supply and demand, you know, you're not going to see much change with regards to housing prices. So, you know, an interesting theory nonetheless, but for the time being, I don't see much of an effect. Now, long term, it could mean that you see a bigger pullback in the value of some of these areas because the prices were moved up so quickly artificially. But what are your thoughts? Right? Do you think this is actually happening? Have you seen it happen? Have you been in a situation where one of these big tech companies, one of these iBuyers, have actually purchased a property from you or someone you know and actually paid more for it than, than they thought it was worth, than the realtor thought it was worth? Let me know in the comments below, right? I'd love to know what you think about this. How do you think it's going to play out in the long term? Because, you know, at the end of the day, there has to be something that happens from artificially pushing the market up too fast. Or does it? I don't know. I'd love to know your thoughts, so put them in the comments below. And do me a favor, if you find any value in this content at all, hit that thumbs up, let more people see it, you know, because stuff like this needs to get out there, it needs to spread so that buyers are aware of it um, and, and, and know exactly what's happening in the market. I'll continue to update you on this as we move forward. But do me a favor, if, you, if you're wondering if you should buy now or wait, check out this video here where I dive into it in more detail. But I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I appreciate the support. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.